Hi, everyone. Welcome again. My name is Dr. Ryan Burkhardt. I'm joined by Dr. Trent Langhofer as we talk about questions, stigmas, and benefits of professional counseling. You know, Trent, today, talking about affect regulation and, and what that means and what that is and how that comes from counseling is a really relevant topic because really in our culture today, we're kind of trained to identify the things that we may find activating um, or, or kind of emotionally dysregulating for us, things that kind of generate negative emotions in, in us. And we're actually kind of encouraged to, to avoid those things. We're actually encouraged to set up our life to avoid those things. And we see this actually taking place a lot on college campuses where we have safe spaces being created. And, and really it's, it's a fascinating thing because the whole idea of academia is to engage ideas or thoughts that may be different than your own. Um, so this idea of we identify the things that may cause emotional dysregulation in us and we avoid them at all costs, it actually may not lend itself well to having a, a healthy mental approach to life. So when we talk about this kind of regulating of emotions and how that may actually come from counseling, what are we really talking about in that process? Yeah, Ryan, you're exactly right. In our culture, we are kind of moving away from anxiety inducing stimuli, whether it's politically, whether it's relationally, whether it's academically. And, and what's interesting about that is the more I avoid uh, anxiety inducing stimuli, the lower my threshold tolerance for anxiety becomes. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we're seeing kind of this, I think what I've called it with, with some of my, my clients is RDD, resiliency deficiency disorder. I mean, it seems as if, and listen, this isn't to say, this is in no way, shape or form to suggest that people aren't going sure. through very, very serious things that are incredibly damaging to our psyche and our emotional well-being. But there is also this, where we're seeing some of um, this, this lack of resiliency where relatively minor things are, are causing severe emotional dysregulation in our clients. Yeah, well, you're exactly right. What, what we're training our clinicians to do in the community mental health counseling program here at, at CCU is lead our clients through their life stories. And, and we're asking clients to highlight those moments that were especially painful. And as clients are highlighting those moments in session, um, our clinicians are trained to help clients learn affect regulation skills, grounding techniques, mindfulness techniques, um, breathing techniques, all, all things that are well documented in the literature to help clients overcome unwanted feelings of sadness or, or fearfulness or anxiety. And, and what that does, and you're using the right language, it promotes a resiliency in our clients that equips them to handle life on life on life's terms now how, how how much easier would it be if i could live life on trent's terms right but the rest of the world won't abide by trent's rules and so we're, we're really equipping clients to deal with life as it comes at them and the 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 terms that came to mind as you were describing some of the current uh, infrastructure in um, anxiety tolerance in our culture are ideas like responsibility and maturity. You know, taking responsibility for how I feel, growing and developing to the point of, of being able to regulate how I'm feeling. Academically, we want to challenge students. You know, we want to provoke thinking in, in students. And that necessarily means at times creating some internal tension that students have to wrestle through. And that's just useful. It promotes maturity. Um, it promotes growth. It promotes the capacity to self-regulate, all hallmarks of optimal functioning in adults. Yeah, so, so Trent, you know, what does that look like? I think for, for the individual who's potentially considering counseling or maybe seeking counseling, this balance between, you know, caring for the person who's across from you as a therapist, and then at the same time, finding ways to challenge, what, is that, what should a client expect in terms of that dynamic within a counseling session? Yeah, so, so that first piece is that affect regulation piece. We're trying to lead clients through their stories, as I've suggested, to maybe elicit some feeling and help the client learn ways of coping with those feelings. Often, um, there are, are, are beliefs that are tied to those feelings 
that that in some ways influences those feelings to seem overwhelming or almost like if I allow myself to really feel what I felt in the moments that have caused pain in my past, it, it, I won't be able to handle it. And that thought, I won't be able to handle it, is what keeps me avoiding not just that particular issue, but any other issue that might elicit those same kinds of overwhelming feelings. And so helping clients change the beliefs that are attached to experiences from their past or feelings in their past uh, is a big part of, of clinical counseling. We call that the fancy language for that is cognitive restructuring, where we're trying to uh, change core beliefs clients have about themselves, others, or the world in which they live in ways that promote health uh, and well-being in their lives. So that, that core belief cognitive restructuring component is a necessary secondary uh, piece to the treatment process when we're talking about how we really get in there and dig in and help clients. You know, and I think you're you're 100 percent right. And I'm I'm kind of catching what you're throwing. I'm picking up what you're putting down. And I, and I think it's always important for us to remember that all of this dynamic, the 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 dynamics of counseling, where where we're listening to our clients, where we're challenging them, where we're walking beside them, we're encouraging them. All of this is done within this atmosphere of of acceptance of of love and care and support all of that is of course boundaried um but but it there is this unconditional positive regard that we have for our clients where we as counselors we're, we're setting aside any thoughts we have about what someone may have done in the past or what may have been done to them and we're just accepting the person who's choosing to be vulnerable with us in the in a session and I think, oh, go ahead, Trent, go ahead, go ahead. Go well, ahead. I was going to say most clinicians in our field that are well-published authors mm -hmm. say that, that at the core, uh, human well-being is contingent on deep, meaningful connections with other individuals. Like that's the foundation upon which uh, uh, well-being is, is built. And so yeah. what, what we provide clients with is an environment where perhaps the first experiences a client has at genuinely revealing who they are, all their greatest hurts, fears, failures, hopes, and dreams can finally happen because counseling is a confidential environment that's also safe and based on genuine yeah. acceptance of our clients. I mean, clients can come in and really re reveal, in most cases for the first time, who they really are, their true identity. And just in revealing that and having a professional accept that and meet clients where they're at uh, has, has huge implications for the degree to which clients thinking about themselves, their worth, their past, and what they're capable of in their future uh, has. So that's a, that's a really important piece of the, of the treatment process that I really hope uh, people who are watching this can understand like the, the liberating feeling of revealing my true self to a trusted other yeah. that cannot be understated. Really critical component of the treatment process. Thank you, Dr. Langhofer. For those of you who are watching this, thank you for joining us as we wrestle with questions, stigmas, and the benefits of counseling. Um, as always, we, we always kind of plug the Clinical Master of, of Arts uh, in Clinical Mental Health Counseling Program uh, at CCU, as well as the Community Counseling Center uh, that's in Colorado Springs that's providing clinical services to clients all over Colorado. Um, we hope that we either see you in class or that we can serve you in some way in a clinical setting.